Roads across the Twin Cities are changing. And sometimes that's not always a good thing. Longtime residents of now up and coming areas could be getting forced out. That was one finding of a University of Minnesota research project that really looked at gentrification. Mm -hmm. And gentrification is one of the uh, most challenging things, I think, for a city. Because if you are on the moving in end of gentrification, it's pretty exciting, right? Like the price of housing is maybe a little lower than in the mm -hmm. super hot neighborhood, and you get to ride the wave up. But if you live there before, Kim, uh, what this research is finding is that, boy, the changes mm -hmm. can be very dramatic oh, yeah. to the character of a neighborhood. Especially if you are a renter in these neighborhoods mm -hmm. because you really are at the mercy of your landlord. And if your landlord can all of a sudden realize that they can charge a lot more in rent, they're going to. And you're out of سيدات تشربان هاي إسلام هو واحد قرية هذا كوالد إنك قبل يا والد إنك دادنا يا إسلام هو يوضع بوكان دي كريم معان بيوضع قلان إن بدن باقلان أم حو هاي يوضع قلان دات كوالد دات حواء دات قول كريم دات كي كرميت نماها مرك أنا قو واحد كثور جنا دات كلو قرية هاي إنك صارينا بنا كوالد إنك قبل يا هدي أنا قو ما أقول إن وانا ديدني وكاس واحد يقف وياه أمير والبكاء غران لقاها لبركة كانها وحن ندري قريقس نايت نين أبريل إس إس أفريو تبان كيدي سجار يتبان سنة إيد لما علي سنة في باتنات باي السعودة أنا وحوق لي بعند هذا أنا حاول قبة أنا هاي أنا قرب حين تيدو أنت قريقة إن لي قصارو بالدون أيها وبنان كلا يدقو ما أود أن أكبره ما أود أن أقول إجارته وحاول يسقاش تربان هاي ملا ملا مشان هاي ما أقانه إلهي جنة كنا نكون مهدينا دولة نكون مهدينا إن يقول يهنا كذا بيرمان إن إن أبا يوسف بيرمان إن يودن كنا كسهران بيرمان أول ما نب يشد يو أنقصوا عرنا هذا نشد دي يدبك ي ي هل كان نقول هاي ستة همين كي واحد سحدا نقول ما أركب هذا سكرات بان I am one of the residents that's also going to be uh, that MPHA wants to displace among thousands of residents, and the residents that spoke here are part of that. Uh, but they're from Elliot Twins, and MPHA has been targeting Elliot Twins and Glendale Townhomes where I live, uh, and other buildings, but mainly those two building, those two areas, to privatize them. And 99% of the buildings will be owned then by private investors, which would then end up displacing residents because these homes will turn, will, will flip into condominiums and so forth. And majority of these residents cannot afford it. The city of Minneapolis has all the power to say no to these plans, but right now they're silent. townhomes which is in southeast Minneapolis um, I've been living here since I was four years old so I've been living here for most of my life 
and yeah this area has been really like completely completely revolutionized the like prospect park um east bank area has been changed dramatically in the past um five years i'd say that since 2014 since the light rail was built in this area um there's been an it's and maybe 2013 which is when the cfc TCF Bank Stadium, I believe, was built. Since those two like projects were completed, the amount of buildings that have been built in this area, the amount of new amenities that have been built in this area, like before we used to have an Arby's and like that was it, and now we have like a Sprout, which I think is like a, a salad bar. So it's really wild, but we have I think there's like six or seven new buildings that have been built. We have a new grocery store. Fifty percent of Glendale is under the age of eighteen. Um, there's 184 units. There's a couple of single, uh, single um, units that are for elders specifically, but the entire makeup of Glendale is pretty, um, is pretty families. All of them are families, um, and it's mostly East Africans and Black Americans. There's a handful of Hmong families that live in Glendale, but yeah, that's what Glendale is. It's mostly Black Americans and East Africans. building here and since that new building has been here everything just went downhill and all bad things been happening to be honest because I wouldn't notice that the new people that been that, that work in the new building won't allow children or us youth like I'm 23 and all of us to be around the area at a, at a certain time without calling the cops or being worried about their safety but they don't understand is that they put putting our safety in jeopardy when they call the police for something that has not been done wrong. And we have our own police precinct in F building. And it doesn't make sense. The one thing that doesn't make sense to me is like all the recent shootings that have been happening within like a mile radius or just on the block, what takes so long for you guys to come there to show support or just to like to protect us? How many innocent bystanders will it take for, for something to change? How many shootings and how many killings need to happen before we get noticed? How many people need to be kicked out of their own? Because to be honest, like the new building has a lot of apartments available and nobody was moving in because of the rate. Ever since this new building, uh, they, they, they built this new building right here. Uh, the view that we had before is not there no more. Uh, we used to come out here and play soccer or football and the lights would be on at the park. It's not no more. They don't have, uh, they don't give us those kind of opportunities no more because it's, it's all because of this building. And the neighborhood is changing every day. We have more people that are calling the cops. The police um, interactions that we have here in Minneapolis uh, weren't always good. But with the building now, like starting at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, they have cops that literally do nothing but go around in the blocks and just looking for trouble and looking for people to tell to go home when in fact we are home, these are our homes and we live here. So it doesn't really make sense that they're patrolling these areas trying to make sure people are going home when we live here. Um, and if you do talk to them or be like, yo, like, why are you doing this? Um, they act like really like, like, it's kind of like a bully mentality where like, oh, y'all really think y'all the shit. They say things like that to us or like, oh, you know, if you don't like start walking, like I'm gonna beat the shit out you. Um, and earlier this summer, a couple of kids had guns pulled on them. Politicians in political office have a obligation uh, to make sure that these sort of things uh, stop and are prevented. all the way to Lake Street that developers are coming to take over. Yep. Um, we have even public housing, all the places that we live to, developers are coming in and they're buying it up. Our elected officials, um, they lie to us. They tell us that they care about us. They care about racial and economic equity. They care about people of color, Somalis. They gave us a, na a street with our name on it so that we can look the other way, so that we will be intimidated and bullied and 
retaliated it against if we come on and try to fight them on it, but that's that's not what we're going to let them do. We know what they're up to, and we're here to say that we're not going to let that continue. We have to stick together and come together and say, whether it's housing or whether it's our businesses, we're not going to let them take over and take what's ours.